will be in order. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the Chair will postpone further proceedings today on motions to suspend the rules on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered or on which the vote is objected to under Clause 6 of Rule 20. Recorded record votes on postponed questions will be taken after 6.30 p.m. today. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1141. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 111, H.R. 1141, a bill to authorize the Secretary of the Interior to study the suitability and feasibility of designating prehistoric, historic, and limestone forest sites in Rota, Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, as a unit of the National Park System. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Whitman, and the gentleman from Northern Mariana Islands, Mr. Sablon, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as so much time as I may consume, and I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Madam Speaker, H.R. 1141 authorizes the Secretary of the Interior to study the suitability and feasibility of designating prehistoric, historic, and limestone forest sites on Rota Commonwealth of the North Mariana Islands as a unit of the National Park System. The island of Rota contains cultural and natural resources, including caves with pictographs and several other prehistoric relics, as well as sites from the 20th century Japanese occupation. Additionally, Rota has a natural limestone forest that is habitat for endangered species native to the island. With that, Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Virginia reserves. The gentleman from the Northern Mariana Islands is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Madam Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 1141, the Rota Cultural and Natural Resources Study Act. The bill authorizes the Secretary of the Interior to determine whether it is suitable and feasible to add certain cultural, archaeological, historical, and natural resources of the islands of Rota in the Northern Marianas to the National Park System. This same measure was approved by the House in 2010 without dissent, and I hope my colleagues will approve its passage again today. I want to thank Chairman Hastings and Ranking Member Markey for the, of the Natural Resources Committee for their support of H.R. 1141. I also want to thank Chairman Bishop and Ranking Member Grijalva of the Subcommittee of Natural Parks, Forests and Public Lands for their help in bringing this measure to the floor. We all understand that resources are limited and that we must not add to the debt our children and grandchildren will be responsible for tomorrow. At the same time, we owe a debt to our descendants to preserve and protect those resources that we hold in trust for them today. Therefore, when considering adding a unit to the national park system, we have to balance these two requirements, and we have a well-established process for doing so. The National Park Service began this process on the island of Rota in 2004. A study team assessed the ancient Mochon Lati Stone Village and other sites of the ancient Chamorro people who first inhabited the Marianas in some 3,500 years ago. The team explored the Chugai Cave, containing over 90 pictographs of prehistoric origin. They inventoried the rare species of plants and animals endemic to the limestone forest that still blankets parts of Rota, home to the critically endangered Aga, or Mariana scroll, and the endangered Nosa Luta, or Rota Bridal White Eye. Having completed this field reconnaissance in September of 2005, the Park Service issued a report that concluded there are cultural and natural resources on the island of Rota that are of national significance. The Park Service recommended the next step in designation of a new unit of the park system, a suitability and feasibility study. And H.R. 1141 authorizes the Secretary of Interior to take that next step and conduct the necessary study. I would like to note that the people of Rota look forward to the possibility of having areas of their island added to the national park system. 
It was then Senator Diego M. Song Songao of Rota who first encouraged the Park Service to conduct a reconnaissance of the archaeological sites on his home island and to determine their importance as part of America's legacy. Rota Representative Teresita A. Santos testified before the Natural Resources Committee enthusiastically supporting a national park on Rota. Rota Mayor Melcher M. Indiola of Rota has added his support on, to the record and as has the Rodemarana Island Senate President Poe Manglodia, who also hails from Rota. Of course, during a study authorized by H.R. 1141, the people of Rota will continue to have ample opportunity to consider along with the Park Service the suitability and feasibility of including any particular areas of their island in park status. But the people of Rota understand the importance of their culture and of their natural resources and want to pass these values on to their children and grandchildren. They also understand that preserving the remains of ancient Chamorro culture and the plants and animals of the limestone, limestone forest of Rota has value today because visitors from elsewhere in the world want to see that which is unique and experience what only Rota has to offer. Last week, President Obama announced new initiatives to create jobs and spur economic growth in America by improving our visa system and by providing national parks, wildlife refuge, and historic sites to international travelers. Being the closest part of America to the emerging, econ emerging economies of Asia, the Northern Marianas is eager to see new countries added to our visa waiver program. We want to have the unique culture and natural resources of our islands added to the national treasures the President intends to promote. We know that having areas on Rota designated as part of the national park system will help create jobs in ecotourism, transportation, hotels and restaurants for the people of today. We understand that protecting and preserving these nationally significant resources on Rota will also help ensure jobs for our children and grandchildren in the future. I urge my colleagues to support passage of H.R. 1141, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, I would ask the gentleman from the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands if he has any additional speakers. Uh, Madam, speak Madam Speaker, no, I don't. I yield back. Madam Speaker, I have no additional speakers and therefore yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 1141? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the Chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the resolution the rules are suspended. Madam the Speaker. resolution is agreed to. Madam Speaker. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, on that, I would ask that the vote be taken on the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having arisen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3117 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union Calendar Number 255, H.R. 3117, a bill to grant the Secretary of the Interior permanent authority to authorize states to issue electronic duck stamps and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Whitman, and the gentleman from Northern Mariana Islands, Mr. Sablon, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I also ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In 1934, the Congress enacted the Migratory Bird Hunting Stamp Act. This law required hunters to purchase a federal duck stamp in order to hunt migratory waterfowl. Proceeds from the sale of these stamps have been used to preserve vital wetlands and waterfowl habitat across the country. Every year, hunters, bird watchers, and stamp collectors visit the post office, their national wildlife refuges, or sporting goods stores to purchase their duck stamp. 
For the past four years, eight states have participated in an electronic duck stamp pilot program. Instead of having to visit a brick and mortar store, hunters and collectors could purchase the duck stamp online. By all accounts, the program has been a tremendous success. Many Americans have enjoyed the convenience of buying a federal duck stamp over the internet. I'm the author of this legislation and would like to see that it continue to allow hunters to electronically purchase the annual federal duck stamp required to hunt migratory waterfowl. It is time to make this permanent feature of federal law for a more efficient and faster process. Similar technology is already embraced by states that allow sportsmen to obtain their hunting and fishing licenses online. And by the way, many states who require a duck stamp also allow their hunters to purchase the duck stamp online. And as I have spoken with a number of hunters, they also indicate an interest to be able to do this, and especially hunters that may at the last minute decide to want to pursue a hunting activity the next day if they are not in the area where a post office is open, then they are not able to enjoy a day on the water hunting waterfowl. As a member of the Migratory Bird Conservation Commission and an avid waterfowl hunter, I am proud to sponsor this legislation to modernize the distribution of the federal duck stamp program without burdening the taxpayer. I want to compliment the lead co-sponsor of this bill, Congressman Ron Kine from Wisconsin, for his leadership, for his commitment, and his passion on sportsmen's issues and waterfowl conservation. Anybody that knows Representative Kine knows how strongly he feels about this, and he has worked on this issue for a number of years, and I thank him for those ongoing efforts. H.R. 3117 is supported by the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation and Ducks Unlimited. I urge support for this bill and reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Virginia reserves, the gentleman from the Northern Mariana Islands, is recognized. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. And I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong support of H.R. 3117, which would allow the Secretary of Interior to continue sale of electronic dock stamps and expand the program to include all 50 states. The migratory bird hunting and conservation stamp, commonly called the dock stamp, must be purchased and carried by all waterfall hunters 16 years and older when hunting migratory waterfall on both public and private lands. 98 cents of every dollar generated by the sales of the dock stamp goes to purchase or lease wetland habitat for the National Wildlife Refuge System, which benefits migratory waterfall. In some rural areas, purchasing dock stamps can be difficult with hunters having to wait a significant amount of time to receive their official dock stamp. Electronic stamps come with a unique identifying number that serves as a proof of purchase and allows hunters to hunt for 45 days until the actual stamp arrives via the Postal Service. In October, at the hearing of H.R. 3117, the Fish and Wildlife Service supported the bill's intent to continue the electronic dock stamp program. I commend my colleagues, Congressman Whitman and Congressman Ron Kine, for introducing this bill and for their leadership on this issue. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, I would ask the gentleman from the Commonwealth from the Northern Mariana Islands if he has any additional speakers. Madam Speaker, no, I don't, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. With that, Madam Speaker, we have no further speakers, and I also yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 3117 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the resolution is agreed to, and without objection, the Madam motion Speaker. to reconsider is laid on the table. Madam, Madam Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia rise? On that, I ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having arisen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.
For what purpose does the gentleman from New Mexico seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to remove my name as a co-sponsor of H.R. 3261. Without objection. So ordered. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until approximately 6.30 p.m. today. The House is going into recess now that all the debate has been completed on today's bills. Two measures on the calendar. Uh, they're back at 6.30 Eastern Time for recorded votes and special order speeches.